Hey there, it's Kylie Menz here from KylieMenzSpeaks.com and I hope you're having an awesome day. Um, I've just come back from a fantastic VIP event um, I was at where I was masterminding with um, six and seven figure income earners online. And obviously, you know, I want to share these with you. So I'm going to do a quick video that's going to share with you the five keys to prosperity direct from one of the seven figure internet um, marketing gurus and he's also a strong business leader as well. So um, I'm hoping you're going to get some fantastic value out of this. Um, he went into his five key steps of how he went from really from nothing to six figures, but then from six figures to seven figures, and what the difference was that he needed to make to do that. So. Um, I'm going to be sharing a few videos with you. This is one of them. Um, there'll be another series of probably three, four, five coming out very shortly just to kind of help you and guide you along the way um, and taking advantage of being part of my community. You know, I want to give back. I want to add value to you guys as much as possible to help my team grow um, um, and to help other people grow as well. So, um, you know, I've spent money to be at this event. Um, you know, it wasn't cheap to be there. And um, so hopefully you get some fantastic value out of this. So um, I'm just going to go through the key steps. Um, I'm going to keep it fairly simple, fairly straightforward because I want you to get the most of it and just get you thinking about your businesses and how they can be applied in it. No matter whether you're doing an online marketing business or you have a program like I do or you've got an offline business but you're doing some of the things online. So I'm um, hoping this will grow your business either way and take the time to think about these key steps. Uh, you know, this wasn't really just from one of the guys it was actually a common theme throughout um, when we had six or seven of the guys speaking and the, the six seven figure earners so they all shared their secrets and these were the really the five key integral steps to prosperity so I'm just going to go through them one at a time um, the first the first step is know what you want and what is your income target um, and I love this saying I put up here from Chuck, if you don't know what you want, you'll end up with a lot of what you don't. Um, and that's what happens to a lot of people in business. You know, um, this kind of got me thinking back. It's really funny when you sometimes start your own business or um, especially when you start online, you can sometimes forget your own business skills. Um, you know, and I was a sales manager and an estate agent for six years running a highly successful business uh, you know I had a sales team um, we went from doing 200 grand to just under a million and you know over that period of time we put in some processes and um, you know grew the business by looking and analyzing at what was working and what wasn't and one of the things you know I hadn't applied for myself until the recently the last few months was looking at the figures again you know what does it really take to grow your business and to get to the target you want um, and by doing that over the last few months I've really started to double my income very very quickly because I'm focusing on the right things so um, what you what we talked about for us for an online business is breaking it down so it was breaking it down from the point of view of what's your end goal what's your income target for 2015 um, define it live with it work with it love it and know that's where you're going <clears throat> but from there break it down to the point of um, what's a monthly target <clears throat> and what's a daily target um, and then look at what things you do and what activities you do to get that daily target. So for us online, it's about getting um, leads through to your business. It's about getting generating clicks that are going to create those leads. So understanding what the conversion rates are, how many clicks do you need to get a certain number of leads, how many of those leads turn into buyers and so on and so on. And you know, it can be anything. So for me in a state agency, it was always about the number of viewings compared to the number of offers and then compared to the number of deals. So um, break those figures down and especially if you're working with other people, um, you know, I remember running the sales team and, you know, it used to freak them out a bit when they got their target each month um, and, you know, there's nothing worse in sales where you've had a brilliant month, you've done fantastically and then you're straight back to zero again and you think, oh God, I've got to do it all again. So by chunking it down into smaller chunks, it becomes much easier. So, you know, is it, you know, if you've got a 50k target, is it eight deals that you need to get or is it eight um, 
client sign-ups or whatever it is that you need to do for that month to get to your target. So knowing your figures is crucial and you should be tracking them each month because then if you're not on track, you can adjust to be there. So, you know, if you've got a goal for the month and you're through your first week and you've not even started on that goal, then there's problems. So you need to look at why, what's not working um, and start to really use those figures to help grow your business, especially if you're like me and you want to go from a six figure to a seven figure business over the next year or two, um, you know, you've got to really start to get used to working with those figures. And it also gives you momentum because if you know you're halfway there or, you know, you've achieved a certain level, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, and one of the things that they did say as well was never compare yourself with other people or other businesses. Um, you know, what he strived to do, and I really love this about him, was he always strived to beat his last month's target. And it could be by a dollar, it could be by 10 pounds or whatever. It was just that he always wanted to better his target slowly because that knew he meant his business was growing. So think about what your best month was. Think about what you were doing last month and, you know, add to it. Where do you want to be? Where are you going to stretch yourself this month? So break it down. Know your figures and really get clear on where you want to be. Um, and you all know how your business works more than I do. So, um, you know, I was talking to one guy and he said, oh, but I fluctuate by months and it could be seasonal so I suggested to him maybe a quarterly target and you know what does he need to get to a quarterly target how does he know that he's on track what does he have to do to get there so that you can still monitor it but it may be not on a daily basis so whatever's going to work for you but it's looking at those results so that you know that um, because if you look at results initially the income will follow simple as that. So I always used to know in a state agency, if we got a certain number of viewings, we always knew we'd get offers and we always knew we'd get deals. The income follows. Um, but if they weren't getting viewings or they weren't getting applicants and they weren't getting people out there, we knew they would never ever get deals on the table. So think about the things that actions obviously lead to results. If you're not getting their actions right, you're not going to get the results. So I hope that's helped. That's the first one. Step one, know what you want. Step two was join the right mastermind. Um, and this can apply to anyone in business. You know, online we really encourage it because when you're working from home, it can be quite a lonely place. You know, um, I really struggled when I first got started online because I come from a really busy, demanding sales environment to suddenly working by myself. And um, I really struggled with that momentum, keeping my daily focus. Um, and it wasn't that I'm not a hard worker. It was just that I could easily waste time at home um, and get distracted and think, oh, what was I doing, that sort of thing. Um, and yet at work, I was always one of the most highly organized, some people used to call me angrily organized, structured person. So it was really fascinating, the shift to working from home and, and giving up my job. Um, and a mastermind to help me with that. So again, that's one of the things that's helped me grow my business over the last three or six months is circulating with the right people. Um, and that also means the right people with the right income level. So one of the one of the big things I've stressed to myself was I want to hit a million next year. So I need to get around those guys that are already doing it. And um, so and hence the reason I've joined a specific mastermind next year. Um, I'm going to be sharing this with my team and, and my followers, um, but I'm working with a $10 million earner next year um, in a very small mastermind group, and we're going to grow exponentially next year with our businesses and have events and things like that. So if you want to know more about that, connect with me, keep with me, and you know, you'll get some value out of that as well. Um, but again, it, I knew that I wanted to go to a different level. So um, you know, the old saying is correct, you know, you are at normally the income level with the people you surround yourself with. Um, and one of the guys spoke really highly of this on the weekend because, you know, he didn't have a good background. He struggled in relation to, you know, he grew up in an East End estate. It was rough. It was, you know, the guys were kind of not really that motivated. And yet, you know, he did well. And, you know, he was always the kind of the entrepreneur. And they used to laugh at him. They used to joke with him and go, you know, why, why are you doing that? Why are you wasting your time? time and you know less than four years later he's outperformed them all several times over 
you know, he's really followed his passion and where he wanted to go um, and never let them stop him. That was the other thing. So by being associated with people that are on the similar track to you or have done it before, um, you're surrounding yourself with, I hate the word, but like-minded people who get what you're going through. They understand your struggles. They understand, you know, that people are going to laugh at you. They understand that you're going to have those sort of doubtful moments and a mastermind will help you get through them so that you're not alone and you're going through them together. So join the right mastermind and if your company doesn't provide it or you don't have access one, uh, you know, think about joining us. We do. Obviously, that's what we do. Um, but also just start to get out there and find it. Find yourself a mastermind. Step three was follow the right plan and strategy. Um, and this was something I adjusted massively um, about two months ago. Um, I had hit an income ceiling, I guess, in a way where I knew where I was at and I just couldn't seem to break through that income ceiling. And one of the things that um, one of the guys shared with me, and funnily they really stressed this at the VIP event on the weekend, was are you doing the right things in your business to get the right results? And what they made me look at, and again, I've used this before and I don't know why I wasn't thinking about it really, um, but it's what they call the 80-20 rule. You know, someone, some people know it as the Pareto's law. Um, you know, there's a couple of guys that read books about it that we follow. But it's the 80-20 rule in relation to kind of 20% um, of your time will actually get, no, yeah, 20% of your time will get the most results compared to the other 80% of the stuff that you're doing. So what is it out of that 20% that's getting you the most results? Um, and I used to see it with sales teams all the time. You know, you'd have a team of sales um, and it was always the top certain percentage that were getting, tw you know, the biggest results. So it was 20% of the people that were making the highest part of the income all the time. So if you don't know the 80-20 rule, um, Google it, learn it, understand it, how it can apply for your business but start looking at the actions that are actually getting your business results so for us for online it's things like focusing on traffic you know simple as that to run an online business you need to have traffic coming in so you need to have clicks and you need to have leads coming into your business or you don't have a business it's simple as that so one of the things you have to fo focus on is what action do you take every morning or every evening whatever you work to get those clicks and leads. You know, is it placing an advert? Is it doing a blog post and distributing it? Um, is it doing some paid marketing or whatever it is to get that? You need to be doing it. Um, email marketing is crucial for us. You have to follow up. So we get a lot of conversions from our email follow-up system. So making sure that the emails are going out, making sure that the people are followed up. So once they join your list, they get that regular communication coming through. And some of that can be systemized, which is fantastic, but it's making sure that that's all in place. So again, look at your business and look at, um, one of the guys mentioned it was quite cool. It was like, what are your $10 an hour activities? What are your hundred dollars an hour and what are your thousand dollar an hour activities um, and what are you good at you know what do you thrive doing that's going to get you the best results and start to monetize and do more of the stuff that gets you results and less of the stuff that doesn't um, so looking at your plan and strategy and knowing exactly where you're going is absolutely crucial so get hope that's got your kind of juices thinking about your business and thinking about what you're doing um, and kind of doing the stuff that gets your results first. You can do the other stuff later if you want, but do the stuff that gets your results first. So no playing on Facebook all morning until you've got the stuff that you need. <laughs> so that's step three. Step four is find a coach that has been there and done what you want to do. So that was one of my big challenges over for me, definitely. Um, that I really wanted to do. Um, I followed a mentor last year that's got me to a certain level, um, but they weren't really focusing on the things that I wanted to do, um, that I knew that I was good at, that I knew that I could convert for my business to take it to another level. So what did I do? I haven't ditched them as mentors. They're still a part of my team. They're still there and I love them dearly and I'll still work with them next year. But I found a specific one-on-one -on -one coach that's going to take me to another level because he's doing the stuff that I know that I need to be doing and he's been there and done it um, and that's my 10 million dollar earner you know he's done 10 million online so far and I'm joined a specific mastermind to be with him specifically in a small group so that he can show me my next step and what I need to do and I know he'll show me that because I know he's been there and done it 
Um, so whereas a mastermind can be, it's similar to a mastermind, but a mastermind can be a bit more generic because a mastermind can also be a business mastermind. So it could be that it's a bit more generic. So it could have things like about marketing. It could have things like about staff. It could have, um, you know, specialists around accounts, all that sort of thing. So a mastermind can be a little bit more generic as long as they still got the results that you want to go. So they might be running a successful business at the level that you want to run. Um, vice versa, whereas a coach specifically and ideally walk to the specific path. So if you're a coach, for example, you want to work with a coach doing the income level that you want to do. So um, if you're a speaker, you know, who is your idealistic speaker that you want to get around and work with, who is running the business that you want to be running or you want to take your business to his level or their level. So think about a specific coach and do everything you can to get around and be a bit patient. You know, sometimes like I know there's one guy that I specifically want to work with, but I'm not quite to his level of where he loves to work with people. So he's my second coach. He's my next one. So I've already got him lined up for 12 months time because I know if I can hit my specific income level for next year, I know he'll want to work with me because that's where he loves to take people from to the next level. So again, it's thinking about that sort of stretching you every time. So let's stretch next year and then stretch the year after. So anything to do with growing your business is, is absolutely crucial. Um, step five is the one that I love the most. I think that's because I'm highly organized and I don't really want to work that hard anymore. I've done the 60 hour sales weeks. I've been on calls 24 hours a day. I've taken calls at ridiculous hours of the evening. I've done long commutes. You know, I've done all that. And the reason I got online was to create myself a lifestyle business where I can work one or two hours um, doing the really key stuff and then have the rest of the day doing the stuff that I love or taking time out. Um, or I can just plan my day. So like I can do two or three days massively and then have three or four days off depending how I want to work when I feel like working. So that's why I've created the lifestyle business and started online and that's why I work with the program that I do because a lot of this is done for me. So, um, but applying this to your business, so start to think about, you know, um, what systems can you put into place that saves you time? Um, so like, for example, I was talking to a guy last night who's a really famous um, speaker. He does sales coaching speaking. Um, he's just spoken in front of 3,000 people in South Africa. He's got three different events on out there. He's, he's spoken several times in the UK, um, but he's struggling for his time in the fact that he loves getting up on stage on speaking, but that's his whole income. So if he's not delivering on stage, he's got no other income coming in. So it's all dependent on himself. And that's critical because if something happens to him and he can't work, he's got no income coming in. So we, we sat down and we're going to brainstorm actually in January, funnily enough, how he can systemize some other products for him coming in so he can get some automated income coming in so that if he doesn't work or he chooses to take some time out then he's still got income coming in and it could be a high-end um, coaching academy type program or it could be just a product online we're not sure yet we're going to brainstorm that but think about stuff that you can systemize and then stuff that you can outsource as well because outsourcing is crucial if you want to grow your business one of the biggest things I hear with entrepreneurs, like I do lots of networking with women entrepreneurs. I love them. I love working with them. I love listening to how spiritual they are and they've always got some sort of drive to, to help and make a difference and I love working with women entrepreneurs. But the thing I see the most all the time is two things. One is they always feel like they have to do it themselves because obviously to do it yourself it's always done better than letting someone else do it for you and secondly that they um, don't Oh, what's the word? It's not give it up, but they feel they have to know everything. So they have to learn everything. So they have to be experts in every element of their business. Um, and actually, I used to see this a lot in my sales force. You know, um, sales guys on a regular basis, are, if they're top income earners and top salespeople, 
quite often they are the worst at paperwork. And I used to have this argument with my um, the owner of the company I worked with because um, I had two guys in my office and one of them was, you know, he was that top income earner for us every time. He always outsold everyone else. Um, and he got criticised a lot because of his paperwork. And I was like, so I used to find systems and kind of a bit of help and support to help him with his paperwork because I knew if he had to get down and bogged down to do it, it would restrict him doing the stuff that actually he was so dynamic at. So reassess your strengths. You know, what is it that you're really good at? What is it that's going to get you the best results? You know, is it out networking? Is it speaking? Is it, um, you know, sending out that email marketing because that's how you get people to, to know, like, and trust you? And I don't know, but analyze your business and look at the stuff that you're really good at and look at the stuff that you're not so good at or just also don't quite like doing <laughs> and then think about how you can systemize that process to then outsource it. Um, so I always say to people think about how you can um, at least have some sort of system or process in place that helps with that um, outsourcing scenario because the best way to use a good outsourcer and help have people is to have some sort of standard, some sort of system, some sort of process in place so they know exactly what you're looking for. Um, so like I know uh, one of the guys online for example, he has a um, sales marketing funnel that brings people through uh, a certain amount of questions, a certain amount of answers and they have to fill out a survey um, before it goes any further. Um, and what he does with that survey is that survey is then outsourced to a salesperson. Um, and it's not to close them or to find out, you know, whether they can make money from them or whatever, but it's to qualify them. So actually they pick up the phone, they go through a series of questions, you know, what sort of income do they have to play with, what are they looking to achieve, what sort of time have they got to allocate to their business, all that sort of thing. So it goes kind of through a pre-qualifying um, process. And then he picks up the phone to only those guys that are really pre-qualified and, and fit his requirements. Otherwise, they just go through the standard marketing funnel and, and system and process from there. So what that means is that from a coaching point of view, he's only dealing with really high-end clients. Um, and they have to be specifically either um, really skill set trained or have a certain financial level or, or whatever because that's the sort of client he wants to work with. So again, he's outsourced that so that he doesn't have to then get bogged down wading through the 50 applications to get to the four applications that, that he needs to be spending time with. So always think about how you can automate and outsource because that was one of the biggest steps that they all talked about going from six to seven figures or, um, you know, raising their income to a different level because, again, you're stopping that awful feeling of trading your time for money. Um, you know, if you can eliminate anything where you can trade your time for money, which restricts you because you only have enough hours in the day and you're exhausted and you don't want to be working all that because we want a lifestyle, we don't want a job, um, think about things like that that you can outsource and don't be scared to give them up because you don't have to be an expert at everything. Simple as that. So that's the five steps to prosperity. I hope that helps and provides you with fantastic information. If it does, it would be great to have your feedback below. Like, comment, share as much as you can this video. Um, and if you do want to know, and this is, I don't want to pitch, but if you do want to know what I use, um, go to online income system, kyliemens.com, um, and have a look at the system that I'm using. If you want something that's pretty well done for you, it covers all of that, and you only have to focus on one aspect of the business, um, then do go and check it out and watch the video and see what your thoughts are from there. But it's Kylie here and I hope that's provided you with fantastic value and I will be sharing some more secret insights from my VIP session with the six and seven figure earners on the weekend and I'll be in touch again shortly. Cheers guys. Bye.